People's Radio United. So yeah, let's move on. He's hiding in the in this house in Chino Hills. Yeah. Um down down from the, the Ryan's and, house. And boy are they looking for him. They've got hundred and fifteen people all over the place looking for Kevin Cooper. And his theory is and Kevin's a you know, I mean he's a good guy at escaping. He's done it a lot of times. His theory was if he could hang hang out for two or three days, they would assume that he'd he'd left the area and they'd give up looking around there. And then he would be free to, you know, hitch a ride someplace and you know, he wanted to go to Mexico. He he'd be he'd be free to just walk away in a few days. But of course, um, once these he 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 did he did he, he did his plan he, on his now he arrived there on a Friday, uh, a Friday night. And he slept in this he slept in this bedroom that actually people did live there from time to time, but they weren't there then. He slept in a furnished bedroom, and then. When he woke up, he realized that there weren't any curtains on the windows. That he could have been easily seen from outside. So the next night, uh, I guess this was a Thursday. So the Friday, the Friday night, he sleeps in a closet uh, rather than be exposed. He takes a takes a bunch of blankets into a closet, and so he's just hiding. Um, there's a little bit of food in the house, not very much, like Pepsi Cola and things like that. Maybe a canned soup. So and and he there's some meat. There's some meat, so he can make it. They make himself a sandwich every now and then, and he's he's doing all right. Uh, and then Saturday morning, he decides to take a shower, and he hears the a car drive right. The driveway's right outside of this bathroom. He hears this car drive up, and the people who do live there occasionally, uh, a woman wanted to come was just coming in the house to pick up a sweater that she'd left there. So she comes into the front door. She doesn't notice. She doesn't notice anything about anybody being there. Kevin had put everything back. You know, after he make a sandwich, he'd put everything back. So she didn't pick up on there was somebody there. But her coming in kind of kind of spooked him, and he decided it would be best if he left that night. So he waited. Uh, he waited till. Well, he made his last call. He had a girlfriend and. Pittsburgh that he was trying to get money from, have her wiring money, you know, like at a Western Union office so he could travel, but she said she didn't have any money. So that call terminated about 8.25 or something like that, or 8.30, and it was pitch dark by then. Uh, this was a very, very dark area, you know, no street, no street lights, that kind of thing, just dark, and he figures he'll go out the same way he went in, and he puts his puts his uh, and it's a real bad climb down a steep hill and it's muddy. It's muddy, and so he puts his prison clothes back on, and he puts his like four pairs of pants and a couple of shirts and things in another bag that he's going to switch out of, and he makes his way out, you know, shortly after eight thirty, and it, and he he'd shaved off his beard. That kind of thing, and he put his put his hair in corn rolls to somewhat disguise disguise his appearance from how he looked when he got there. So he he finally gets down, he changes clothes, um, puts the prison clothes in it in the bag that he takes another bag that he brought with him, and he walks down to this major intersection in Chino, and he sees a guy come by in like a you know some kind of a convertible car, and he. He just says to the guy, is this the way to Mexico? Is this the right direction? The guy said it is. So Kevin walks out on, onto the freeway, and he starts um, thumbing a ride. Kind of like a hippie couple comes by in a, one of these vans, and he's sitting on what's like a, oh, I don't know, a sofa stool, uh, that kind of thing in the middle of the van. And they take him. A, they take him a few hours away, and then he. They stop. I mean, they they're not going any further. And he gets out, and he, some guy in a K car comes by and takes him all the way to Tijuana. Uh, I mean, not not, not Tijuana. The what, what's what's a town on the American side? I forget right now. But they take him to that town outside of Tijuana, and, and they drive him off at a, a Greyhound bus station, and Kevin goes in there and. He doesn't have any money on him. 
which is kind of funny because the Ryan in the Ryan house, there was all it was. Mrs. Ryan had forty dollars in cash in her in her purse. There was dollar bills and change on the counters on the counters of the kitchen, just right out on in plain view, you know that type of thing. And there was Mr. Ryan had a collection of quarters, you know, up on on his dresser and a and a you know like a coffee mug or something like that. There was there was quite a bit of money hanging around there. Plus she had credit cards in her wallet, a lot of credit cards. But anyway, all that stuff was left. So when Kevin's at the bus station, he's broke, and he sleeps on a bench inside the bus station. And the next morning, he doesn't know if you need a passport to get into Mexico or what. And he asks a couple of people, and they say, "No, you don't need a passport. You just walk. You just walk down there to the uh, immigration gate and present yourself." And he had made up a, you know, he had the David Trotman. Uh, driver's license so he went he, but before he did that he was walking on in this town I wish I could think of it uh, this American town and a woman comes by uh, comes by him on the sidewalk and he grabs her she's carrying a purse with her he grabs her purse away from her and she has like five or six dollars in there but she has for some reason a hundred and five dollars in quarters in a uh, in in some rolls inside of her purse, so now he's got like a hundred and you know hundred and ten eleven dollars. Yeah. So he so he goes that goes and has breakfast at Woolworths and buys a few things like a baseball cap and uh, deodorant, mm -hmm. and toothbrush, you know the basic stuff. Then presents himself at, at the immigration to the immigration people down at the border, and they wave him through, and. About three o'clock that day, uh, this would be Sunday, uh, the Ryans were killed at midnight on Saturday. So around three o'clock on Sunday, he checks into this this little flea bag ho hotel or motel in Tijuana called the Inya, the Inya Inn. And he pays the, the, the daily rate, six dollars. He pays it in quarters. And the clerk remembers all this. She, she writes down, she, all this is in the logbook, and he's sitting in a bar that night when, or, no, he's, he's, he calls his girlfriend back in Pennsylvania again, in Pittsburgh, and she says, um, you're wanted for uh, some, a murder in some crazy, crazy named town in California. She couldn't remember the name Chino Hills. And Kevin thought, well, that's, you know, that's, that's weird. So he, is, he decides he better not stay in Tijuana much longer. And he catches a bus the next day to Ensalada, which is about 80 miles south of Tijuana. And then in a bar at, in Ensalada that night, he sees that, in fact, here's a mugshot of him from, from Pittsburgh, uh, that he's, you know, he's a fugitive from Pittsburgh. Here's his mugshot. And then he's wanted for questioning in connection with the Chino Hills murders. So, uh, pretty had, soon, go ahead, go right ahead. I was going to say, had he had he had never been in the Ryan's house, or had he? He'd never been in the Ryan's house. Okay. You can't even you can't even see the Ryan's house from where he was. You can see the. It's a tall. It's a. It's just a two story house, and it's and it's. Uh, you could see at the, if you looked up from from where he was, you could see the roof of the house, or maybe the tops of these high. The house had a lot of windows, maybe the very high parts of the windows, but you certainly couldn't see anybody in the house. Yeah, and uh, you know he wasn't. He didn't go outside the whole time. The only time he went outside was to leave. You know that at that night at after eight thirty. That's it. Only time he went outside that house. He's trying to be invisible. He was trying to be invisible. I mean, sleeping in a closet with the closet doors closed, that's trying to be invisible. Yeah. I mean, he knows that there was two things that Kevin knew how to do pretty well. And I, I'm not saying this in any, like, I'm proud of Kevin for this, but he knew how to steal cars, and he knew how to hide out. He really did. He had, he had experience in these things. I think it. As Kevin told me once that he maybe stole as many as a hundred cars. 
So wow. this is the this is the really the bizarre thing about arresting Kevin for this crime was that the the, 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 the the prosecutor's theory of the case, the cop's theory of the case was that Kevin killed this, he massacred this family uh, in order to steal their car, to make his escape. Uh, forget the fact that no money was taken from this house, but he massacred him to get the car. Well, the car, there were two cars in the Ryan's driveway. One was a uh, Buick station wagon, and another was this big-ass uh, 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 Chevrolet pickup truck, and they both had the keys in them. You know, the Ryans lived in a very secluded area. I mean, they had no neighbors. They're up there pitched up on this top of this hill. Their neighbors are coyotes. <laughs> so they leave their keys in the car. They don't lock their doors. And all Kevin had to do as an experienced car thief was, of course, he would check the cars first. I mean, he would have he would have hot wired them if, if he that would have if they hadn't had keys, he would have just hot wired them and taken one of them and gone. He certainly wouldn't go into their house in order to steal the car that he was an expert at stealing. So that was the one, like the most counterintuitive aspect of this whole thing. Their motive for Kevin was implausible. I mean, for maybe you or me who don't know anything about stealing a car, maybe we'd have to go kill a bunch of people to steal a car, but he didn't need to. <laughs>